When emergency first responders were overwhelmed by Los Angeles County's most destructive fire yet, a band of surfers, along with their neighbors and friends, stepped up to defend their home turf in Malibu. Their devotion to home drove them to show up for their community during the fire and for years afterward. And now, a model they call the Community Brigade Program could change everything leading to more lives and more homes saved during the increasing wildfires across not just California, but the world. Join reporter Adriana Cargill from KCRW, NPR's All Things Considered, Crooked Media, and more, as she investigates a wildfire story that is not depressing, but is, in fact, a clear hope for the future. Listen now to Sandcastles, an award-winning podcast about home, how we create it, and why we fight so hard for it. Hello, everyone. I hope you're all safe and sound out there. I am excited to introduce audio recordings of our popular Do Better Better essays. Um, I began publishing these this summer to our most engaged members uh, on our blog and cross posting them on Medium. Uh, why not? However, uh, like our newsletter, I am not naive to the fact that many of you prefer listening with your ear holes to reading with your eyeballs. I, too, uh, love audiobooks and podcasts, and so that's why the audio version of our weekly newsletter and now these essays will complement our groundbreaking conversations with diverse interdisciplinary humans working on the front lines in the future and all right here on our podcast feed. We don't really care how you take part in our community. Uh, We're just happy to have you working alongside us on the world's biggest problems and opportunities. Um, A reminder that you can always send feedback to us at questions at importantnotimportant.com, and you can feel free to record a voice memo on your phone and send that in too, and we might use it in a future episode. And that could be feedback or questions or topic requests, you name it, and uh, we will work on it. So here we go. Do better, better, number one. Who do you want to be and why? Originally published June 19th, 2020. I come bearing gifts, kind of. I've been asked quite a bit over the last few months because of our work at Important Unimportant to do some consulting or coaching or speaking on how to prepare for an inevitably more unpredictable future what people can do to plan and execute better for themselves, their families, their companies, their investments, their industries, something that tries to tie together broad themes, systems thinking, known facts, and and, and so many moving pieces with regard to climate and COVID and medicine, biotech, politics, the market, philanthropy. It's a lot, and I get it. There's so many questions and so few facts to operate on. In the meantime, I thought it might be helpful and prudent to start sharing some combination of philosophical and methodological thoughts gleaned from everything we've learned running Important Not Important and uh, working with our community and engaging with the smartest people in the world, basically trying to be the ultimate high-functioning generalist. Now, I'm not saying these little memos will always be coherent, and much of the content won't be anything new under the sun, but the message will always be constructed through actionable questions, and through the prism of how to fight for a better future for everyone, how to think about those things. And it's important to note here that, yes, everyone includes yourself, your family, and your business, and then, of course, all of the many humans out there who demand and deserve fairer legislation and education, justice and a better, cleaner job, um, affordable, accessible health care, and all of the rest of the things like clean air and food and water that the rest of us can sometimes take for granted. So who do you want to be? And more importantly, why? I ran, uh, biked, and swam a triathlon in 2008, competing with team and training and raising money for the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society. I raised over $20,000 from a wide swath of friends and family. Many close friends gave immediately upon hearing about my mission and the organization I was raising funds for. But quite a lot of the money came from friends of friends, and even from several degrees further. In 2008, using Facebook to get the word out about a cause was fairly novel, and I was struck by how incredibly effective it was. 
Of course, it's no longer novel today, in 2020, when it seems like millions of strangers on GoFundMe are covering half our nation's medical and bail bills. That ubiquity is a double-edged sword. It's never been easier to donate time, money, and other resources on the web, but it can be daunting, not to say paralyzing, to sort through the countless worthy causes. The federal government is in shambles. Donate to these presidential candidates and these Senate races and these House races, but we can't forget down-ballot races either like we did for the last 10 years, so here's another 20 make-or-break races. And then, of course, there are all the worthy and reputable nonprofits across health, politics, science, food, water, civil rights, and more. Thankfully, there are even tools to help corral all of that, to make it easier to strategize and then give. But it's still easy and completely understandable to feel pulled in a million directions at once. One possible corrective, which these notes will try to help encourage, is to take a big step back and ask why. Think of the hammer and nail story, which I'll thoroughly mangle here for your benefit. You go to a hardware store because you need a nail. Need is a strong word. You want a nail. But you don't really want a nail. You want to be able to hang something on your wall. But you don't really want to hang something. You want to hang art. But you don't really want to hang art, right? You want to hang the art of an up-and-coming black artist. But you don't really want to hang the art of an up-and-coming black artist. You want to show yourself and anyone who comes into your home that you appreciate this art and support young black artists. But you don't really want to just show them that you're that person. You actually want to be that person. And buying a nail to hang this frame of artwork on your wall is the very first step to being that person. Or you think it should be. Or someone told you it should be. It seems logical, easy, right? A toe in the water. But step back a little further. And now even further. And stop. Why do you want to be that person? The why at 30,000 feet should always drive the how. In your life, your parenting, your work, everything. This isn't some new idea, by the way. I'm certainly not the first to say it or support it or attempt to live it, but it applies to our world more than ever and to you, our action-oriented community. So as you stand there in the hardware store aisle trying to figure out which nail will support your progressive, sexy new frame bridge piece without ripping out a chunk of your drywall five minutes later, start by asking yourself this. Have you always wanted to be the person that does these things, that holds these values? Or is there something or someone new in your life or in the world that's encouraged you to become that person, to take the first step? And further back, is this the right first step? Maybe. If you really want, for example, to support young black artists, what is the rest of your strategy to encourage more support for this artist and for other young black artists? Are there galleries you can visit to which you can bring your friends? Can you feature their art on your Instagram? Should you reach out to the artist to have a conversation about their intentions and perspectives? Are they open to that? Why or why not? Can you sponsor an art installation at the local library? Can your company chip in? Are there nonprofits you can contribute to that provide stipends for Black artists in your area? Is your local government interested in or involved in supporting Black artists? If not, do you need new voices in your local government to draft legislation that will support the artists that live in your town now? who might be best suited for that office? And further, would having those new elected officials in place writing progressive legislation that supports diverse art and makes the cost of living more affordable, knowing art doesn't exactly always pay the rent, might all of that attract more artists to come and work and live in your town? How will those moves help put your town on the map, per se? Coming at a problem or opportunity from several concerted directions at once can often be more effective So what might be the limited portfolio of strategies you are best suited to simultaneously engage in for this specific opportunity? What makes you you, your personality, your energy, your income, your time, your skills? What makes you most effective here? How can you personally affect the outcome? Will you do all of this quietly? Or do you seek approval from your spouse or your children or the artists themselves? Is there a middle ground that appeals to your ego and is still effective? What are the second-order consequences of choosing to invest your time and your money or your energy in this? We can only do so much with the time that we are given. Ask honest questions about yourself and your intentions and the life you want to live for yourself and others. Build your whys. 
If you're a member of our community, if you subscribe to our newsletter, uh, if you listen to our conversations, you already know you care about the planet and others and equity and justice. You enjoy taking action to fight the bad stuff and bring up the good stuff. You can drill that down a little further into caring about specifics like environmental justice, about clean water and air, about healthy, affordable, accessible food, groundbreaking clean jobs, helping frontline communities adapt, about the zebrafish that drive pediatric cancer research. Make your current and future day-to-day actions answerable to your three to four core values. Look at today's probably endless, if it looks like anything like mine, to-do list, and like my children do, ask why for each action, and then ask it again and again and again, going from ground level to 5,000 feet to 10,000 feet to 30,000 feet in blue sky until you've arrived at one of your core values. Or you haven't, in which case you might want to ask yourself if you should be spending your valuable time on something that doesn't fit those core values. Be relentless about this last part, and you will live a purposeful, devastatingly effective life. And we need way more of that. Find your whys that let you successfully answer the who. Who do I want to be? And then work your way down through the hows, all the way down to the practicalities of buying that nail. Because it turns out you might need two. And that's just the start. A reminder that you can share these episodes uh, and more with your friends. Uh, and you can subscribe anywhere you find podcasts. And you can always find the written versions of these uh, at our website at importantnotimportant.com. Have a great week. Thank you.